Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Let's Draw. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's new episode, I'm gonna walk you through how you can create this cool dispersion effect in Procreate. I'm also gonna take a deep dive in explaining the differences between clipping masks and regular masks. So if you've ever been confused between the two and wanna learn more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. As always, I'm using the iPad Pro. This is a 12.9 inch Gen 4 2020 model. The pencil is the Apple Gen 2 pencil. The app is Procreate. And for today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using a 4,000 by 4,300 DPI canvas. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I wanna do is just basically draw a circle for this. So I'm gonna get an orange color here. And we'll go to just the studio pen under inking. Nothing fancy, we're just drawing a circle. So let's do that here, lock it in. And I'm gonna drag and drop the color. So we've got a circle. Like I said, today's video is gonna be talking about that dispersion effect, but it really, more than anything else, is gonna be a deep dive into how masks work. So I've talked about this in previous videos. The first thing we're gonna talk about is clipping masks. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. This is gonna be on top of this circle. And we're gonna set this to clipping mask. So if you've seen my previous videos, when I talk about doing shadows and highlights, I always make a new layer, set it as clipping mask, because this way, we'll switch to a black here, and I'm just gonna go to one of my texture brushes, nothing too crazy. This way, and this is something you don't have to follow along with right now, this way when I color in, like a shadow, you'll see it's actually clipping to that orange. It's not going outside of that orange, it's staying right there on that layer because it's clipping to that one underneath. So we're not gonna do that today. We're not gonna add shadows that way. We're actually going to add a photo and clip it to this circle. So to do that, let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete this layer and I'm gonna go up to my wrench icon up here, and we're gonna go into insert a file. I've already downloaded this photo. As you can see, I've got my face here too, because that's part two of today's tutorial. Uh, but this photo, just something I downloaded off of Pixabay. I'll actually link this in the description. If you guys wanna download that over on Pixabay, you can. See, we just got this kind of crazy colorful rainbow effect here, and I wanna clip this actually to the circle. So I'm gonna make this transformed it uh, to freeform just so I can get it more of a square so it fits the edges of the circle. And we're gonna go back up now to this layer that we inserted, that colorful picture, and we're gonna hit clipping mask and you'll see what happens. Boom, it locks it directly to that circle. So this is something that you guys can use too with text. It works really well with text. So if we go ahead and Let's go up to our wrench icon, and I'm just gonna add some text here, and we'll put clipping. And I'm just gonna edit style. I've got a bunch of different fonts in here, so you guys probably don't have the same ones. These aren't all, you know, the factory presets. So we've got this clipping here, and if we go ahead and duplicate this, I'm gonna slide it to the left and hit duplicate and I'm gonna pull it up on top of the text, and then I'm gonna set it as clipping once we move it. Let me move it first. So we're gonna move it here on top of the text, and then set it to clipping, and you're gonna see it clips to that text. So this is another really cool tool to have in your Procreate arsenal so you can make some fun text using you know, the text feature and then adding some textures like this or photos on top of it. It's a really cool way to kind of make your text pop a little bit more, but we're not gonna do that today. I just wanted to kind of show you how you could use this in a different way. So now that we've got this, what we want is of course, like I said, that dispersion effect. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this circle layer. So sliding to the left and hit duplicate. And then let's go ahead and move that above here. So we've got two different layers now. You'll see that this, we need to set to clipping mask again. And then let's go ahead and duplicate that layer as well. And we're gonna move that up on top. 
and let's set that to clipping mask. So there we go. So we've got clipping mask here and we've got the clipping mask here. Now for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch these two together just to make them one and you're gonna see why in a second. So to create this dispersion effect, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our adjustments layer here and we're gonna go to liquify right here. So once we've got that clicked, we can start moving and liquefying the shape. And we just kind of want to start pulling this up and away up here into the corner. Just so it comes here to the edge like this. And we've got a nice liquid effect. All right, so that's the next step. Now we're going to talk about just regular masks. You'll see clipping mask was what we used before for attaching this here to this here. Masks are gonna work a little bit different. So to go ahead and show you how this works, let's go ahead and with this layer selected, with the liquefied layer, we're gonna hit mask on this. And you'll see that it makes a mask here and you have a big white section right there. So with the way masks work, basically anything that is white on this is gonna be visible. Once you start adding black, to this layer mask, it makes that disappear. So let me show you here. I'm just gonna go to, let's see. We'll just go back to the brush that we were using before on our inking, just the studio pen. So once I start adding black, you're gonna see that everything disappears. So the way that these masks work, it all works on grayscale. So anything white is going to be visible, anything black is going to disappear. And anything in the middle, like a gray, is gonna affect the opacity. So you'll see once I switch to the gray color and I start coloring in, it's starting to take it away, but not all the way. You can still see the colors through there. So depending on your level of gray, that's how you can affect the opacity of this. So let's go ahead and clear these out. But the uh, cool thing here, let me add that back in. So the cool thing here is that the masks are non-destructive. So if you do a mask here, it's not actually affecting this layer here. Uh, it's a separate layer, it's a mask. So if we turn off that mask, you'll see that part disappears, but our original layer is not affected. It's still the same. So this makes it easy if you you know do a bunch of work and you're kind of changing things up and you change your mind later on down the road, you can actually turn off the mask or clear the mask out and you're gonna be able to change that without having to go back and redo everything to this layer. So very good to use if you're doing you know some work that you might have to come back to in the future and what we're going to do next is go ahead and selecting this mask we're going to go down to black because we want to make this thing completely disappear so we're going to select that layer mask and we're going to fill layer so you can see everything disappeared on that because that entire layer mask is now black so let's go ahead turn on our circle down here and we're gonna go ahead and add a mask to this one as well. So let's go ahead and click on this layer and click on mask. Now with this, make sure you're clicking on the circle layer to mask it and not the actual colored uh, rainbow section here. We wanna mask this first layer. So we'll hit mask there. And of course, since it's white, it's not doing anything right now. As soon as we go in and start doing black on here though, of course it disappears. So this is where the dispersion effect comes in and I actually created a brush just for this dispersion brush right here. I've got this available on Gumroad. I will link it in the description below. This brush is totally free, so you don't have to pay anything at all. It's actually what Gumroad calls a zero plus brush. So it's actually name your price. So if you wanna get it for zero dollars and zero cents, you're more than welcome. If you wanna support the channel and pay a dollar, you can do that. If you wanna pay $5,000 for it, you can probably do that too. But uh, anyways, you can get it for free is what I'm saying. So hop on over to Gumroad, get this, add it to your brush library and you can do these cool effects. But I wanted to make it free for everybody to be able to follow along. So we're gonna start this effect. So let's see, we wanna make sure that we're on the layer mask here make sure that black is selected and we're on the dispersion brush and usually with this i'll start out pretty small here on the edge and you can see 
as I'm going around here, it's starting to remove that edge. And that's what we're going for. We just want to get this edge removed. I said I'll start smaller here, even still dropping it down, going back and forth with my size just to start kind of removing that edge. We want to look, make it look like it's kind of disappearing. And that's what's going to give us that dispersion effect. Then you can go bigger to kind of start to bring in some of those bigger spots across there. All right, so we've got that done pretty well. I like the look of that. So now let's go ahead and go back up to our layer mask up here. If you remember now, this is the one that has that liquify to it. So what we're gonna do, turn that layer mask back on. Since this is black, it's hiding everything. So we wanna switch our pen color to white, our brush color to white, so that we can start to reveal some of that. So where the dispersion brush down here made that part kind of disappear from that circle, with black, adding white up here on this layer is gonna start bringing back some of that. So it's gonna give us that effect like those particles are coming off of the circle and traveling off into the distance. So we've got white selected, we've got our dispersion brush selected, and we can kind of start doing this. So if you wanna do this a little bit bigger here and just kind of start touching along here and changing the brush size as you go so that everything has kind of a just a random feel to it you don't want it to be too mechanical and you can kind of start pulling these out that's a little bit too far up probably have like the bigger pieces towards the bottom here kind of having the smaller pieces come up here towards the top and you can kind of have them trail off here as well and you can tap or you can also draw the line too it's totally up to you how you want to do that you just kind of want that randomness to it, have these pieces kind of falling out everywhere. And you'll see just because we've got turning off this mask, because this goes all the way up here, we can go in this entire area and click on it and it's gonna show through that bottom layer because of that mask. So this is a really kind of cool, fun way to use masks and you can create some really cool designs out of it. So pulling back here, you can see it's kind of got that dispersion, breaking apart, traveling back into the distance. Of course, you know, this was made famous with like Avengers and stuff like that. So you can do the same thing. So we've got that done. Let's go ahead and hide all this. And I'm gonna bring in that other picture that I had. So let's go ahead and insert a file. You guys can do this as well. This, just a picture I took of myself and went in and just, you know, removed the background to it. So kind of want to have that kind of weird, funny face to it since we're going to do the same effect on here. So with this, it's going to be a little bit different because we don't have to use a clipping mask with this because we're not actually adding any of these things over top of it. But we do have to do that liquify. So now that we've got our base image here, that's going to basically be the same thing as this one down here. We want to go ahead and slide this to the left and we're going to duplicate that. And then we're gonna go back up to our adjustments layer up here, and we're gonna to go to liquify. And then we're just gonna start pulling the edges. I'm just gonna have this coming off one side. If you wanted to go around the whole thing, you could. And just start pulling this off as well. We just want it to, to kind of come out there towards the edge, like so. All right, there we go. So that's liquefied. From here, we can go ahead and add our masks. So once again, we're gonna add a mask to the bottom. So let's go ahead and click that one, hit mask. And then we're gonna add a mask to the top. Hit that one and mask. And if you remember correctly, the one that's liquefied, we wanna fill that layer with black. So let's change the color to black. We're gonna go back in to this layer mask here and hit fill layer so it's filled with black. And you'll see that disappears now because like I said, anything on that layer mask that's black is gonna hide what's underneath it on this layer. And from here, it's basically the same principle that we just used down here as far as removing and then adding. So we're gonna remove first. So we wanna go down to this layer mask here 
Go back to our dispersion brush and then just start pulling those edges out of here. Just going around the edges. I'm gonna do this a little bit sloppier too, just so you can see some of the things you can do after the fact to fix it. So we, once we've got those edges kind of blended pretty well, then we can go a little bit bigger here and start coming back in and around. That one was a little bit too much down here, I think. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead now and add the dispersion effect back in with that other layer. So we were on black here. That's what's causing that to be removed because of the mask. When we switch back up here then, of course we need to change our color back to white. And this is what's gonna add that back in. So we're on this top layer mask here and we're just gonna start adding in some of those pieces falling out from the side here. And this is a very back and forth process to get it to look right. I'm just doing it really quick in this video so you can get the idea, but definitely play around with it a little bit more on your end. You might take a little bit more time than this just to get the effect to look right. Sometimes you might have stuff a little bit off or the pieces might be too big or too small in certain areas. Uh, and it is a definitely, you know, a kind of back and forth thing with this video. I don't want to try to make it too perfect and take up too much time. So just play around with it on your own so you can get the right effect. You could even add in, if we go real small here, you can even add in like little streams coming up. It's totally up to you how you want to do that. But I think that looks pretty good. It gives the effect that we're wanting to do here. So you'll see here, I don't really like the white here across the face. I think that's a little bit too much. So to fix that instead of erasing, I don't know, can you tell what you're gonna do here? Pause the video and leave a comment. <laughs> so with this, basically what you would have to do is go back down to this layer mask here. That's what we use to remove it. And with this, of course, we you know use black to take it away. So if we use white now and just going in with just a regular brush, let's go back to that, uh, uh, inking brush, just that studio pen. If you go back in with white now, you can see you can actually remove those sections. So we're not erasing, we're actually adding color into here. But because it's adding that white on top of the clipping mask, it is removing that stuff that we already did. So there we go. So that is the dispersion effect. So like I said, that brush that I was using in the video today, totally free, available on Gumroad. I'll link it in the description below. And that is it for today's video, all about the dispersion effect in Procreate. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Also, special thanks goes out to every single subscriber to the channel. Just hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube on Monday. So thanks so much. Couldn't have done it without your guys' support. Didn't think I would ever hit this milestone. It wasn't something I expected. So it's pretty awesome to see. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So thanks again. Also, I've talked about it in every video too. If you guys want a cool group to join, keep creating a Learn, Draw, Share art community over on Facebook is a group I started for artists like you. I will link it in the description below, a place where you can share your art, meet new artists, friends, give feedback, get feedback, want you guys to be a part of it. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. And if you haven't tuned in for the past few episodes, I did start a new podcast too. If you're an artist that wants to make money with your artwork, the podcast is just for that. It's called Make Money With Your Art. I will link it in the description below, available on all the major podcast networks. Definitely go over and check it out. I think I'm up to episode eight this week. So a lot of good information there. So that's it for me. And until next time, keep creating.